Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome everybody to um, Roots and Resilience. And I feel very honored to be able to share um, this particular session with you. Um, and I would just like to say that this is a, an important thing I'm uh, evolving with another permaculture educator is to promote um, the benefits of permaculture um, combined with how we deal with um, mental health, poor mental health and how they kind of cross over. Um, so it's really great that I can come here and just share with you some of the tools that I share on our um, course when we do our social permaculture aspect. So what I'm going to share with you today. So last month, um, I went really through a quick overview of uh, um, lots of different kind of tools, but I thought what would be really beneficial is um, each time. So if I come back next month, I will, you know, do a different one um, is to share some of those tools. And then if you have any questions later on, you can always get in touch or, you know, speak to me or, or, or however you want to do it. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, is that okay, Sophie? Can I can I share, please? Uh, yeah, you should have permission. Is it working? Uh, not yet. Okay, try now. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, so <laughs> there we go. This is all part of the resilience, isn't it? I. Uh, I had this all set up earlier and it seems to have <laughs> disappeared. So please forgive me for a moment um, while I actually just get uh, what I'd like to share with you up. Um, da -da, where are we? Here we go. And just going to look into that. Okay. So hopefully. We'll just come back into the um, okay. I'll just come out. Okay. Oh, here we go. Right. Had this before. Okay. I just want to go in and get the actual slides up. Yeah, I don't seem to be able to do that, which is frustrating. Okay, yeah. Okay, so apologies. I don't seem to be able to just do it slide um, by slide. So actually, I'm just going to stop sharing so I can do that. Otherwise, you're going to really miss what I'm trying to do, I think. So um, yeah, I couldn't get up the actual presentation as I wanted to show you. Uh, here we go. Oh, this is all about resilience. So this is all part of it, the technological resilience as well. Um, I don't seem to be able to share for some reason an actual um, slideshow. OK, so I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I'm just going to do it as it is. And I think you that's might have an option, Wendelin, just to share your screen in general. Like mine pops up and says, do you want to share like this window, this window or just yeah. to share the screen? And then whatever you see, we will see. Well, I, I'm trying to actually share the, the presentation so you can see the, the individual slides, but for some reason, I don't know why I do this all the time, it's it's not actually doing it. Um, and I, I was hoping to, so you don't get distracted by the other slides. Um, uh, just to have the presentation view. Yeah, yeah, but it's not, I don't know why, it's not letting me do it. So, um, yeah. If you click but, slideshow at the top left, the button with like the green triangle on it, will that give you them like a show? Yeah, that will, yeah, it's, um... Well, Wendell, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I don't find those slides on the side distracting. I can't actually read the text on them. So, if okay, it, oh, I, it I've got it, it's you, okay. You need to just focus on the main slide, you know? Yeah. No, I think I've got it. Okay, thank you very much for your feedback, it's brilliant. I've got it sorted, here we go. Okay, so can you all see that? Yep. Fantastic. Okay, so um, permaculture and mental health. Now, um, 
in the past when I've had panic, you know, panics like this with technology is quite appropriate. Um, when I first started doing um, online teaching, which came as a result of COVID, I, uh, I would have panic attacks. I would, um, I, uh, yeah, I had panic attacks and I had to sort of close down the session and then I'd go back in and explain to people. So this is quite relevant, really, I suppose, what sort of just happened in the context of how we deal with situations um, of adversity and when we have situations that we that bring on different kinds of challenges. And I found for me, discovering permaculture and finding tools, different tools that I can have in my kind of permaculture bag, if you like, um, has been really helpful. And, and I, I walk it, I talk it, I, I practice permaculture every day. Um, I've really got that thinking there. So using it as part of my mental health has been really really um important um to me um <clears throat> but we're talking about resilience within this so we're here okay my slides aren't working now so okay bear with me there we go right so what is about being resilient being resilient um is about uh, something that's like an object or material is resilient when it springs back into shape after being stretched or squashed. So it's actually bouncing back from um, adversity. Okay, um, so. And being able to bounce back from adversity or the challenges that we face is really important, especially with there's so much um, crazy stuff going on in the world right now, finding tools and techniques to actually help us to overcome different types of challenges, I think is really, really important. Um, and it's about coping with shocks. It's about um, adapting to change and using um, one of the permaculture principles, which is, you know, what I've used, I've used it a lot absolutely recently, um, is creative, creatively use and respond to change. And it's one that I can kind of continue to use. So bringing in those permaculture principles, um, I find really, really helpful. Um, and thinking about the ethics and the principles, um, so I was mentioning the principles, so thinking about the ethics and how we actually use those. So I find when I get really, when I find something that's really, really a struggle and I really can't cope with it, I find it really hard sometimes to stick to what I believe in and what's really important to me. And um, I kind of, all of my ethics, if you like my own personal ethics kind of go out the window, but I find that actually using um, permaculture as, as, a, as a way to frame um, my thinking helps me to stick to things. So, you know, just for simple things like, if, if I'm really struggling with anything, I'll make sure that um, something I buy, for example, if I'm, if I'm in a state of panic or whatever, I make sure something I buy, is it, you know, is it earth care? Is it recyclable? Um, um, is, is driving somewhere just because I want to overcome some kind of personal challenge? You know, is that something I want to do? And all of this might sound like, well, what is important? Why is that important? But what I've found is that it helps me to actually stick to ethics. So I suppose here, what I'm trying to say is that using those, those, the three ethics of permaculture, which is earth care, people care and fair share is really important, but it also reinforces for me um, about really taking care of my own ethics, what's important to me. So, um, and I find that a really interesting process that I can actually just switch that, those thoughts into really still taking care um, of the planet, which, you know, if you're really in a, in a state of mind where you're just really stressed and, and you, you don't really care about anything, I actually find that I want to make sure that just because it's something to do with my need um, and my ego, I suppose, within that adversity, I still find myself stepping into, um, I don't know, like cake, you know, lots of people like to have cake when they're feeling a bit low. I will even think about, um, uh, the packaging that comes in cake, you know, um, when you buy cake, and it might sound a bit daft, a bit silly, but for me, I think it's really important, and it, it's an important part of who I am. And, and when I'm really feeling that adversity, it's what I have left to hold on to. So sticking to those permaculture ethics help me stick, helps me stick to my own 
ethics that I've created for, for myself. And a big part of that um, is kind of looking at my own story and what do I want to um, express going forward? So what, um, what does being resilience mean to me? So um, I often reflect on other situations where I face some kind of adversity and I look at how I may have overcome them. And I look at other people as well. And I just, um, I just think about how they've overcome certain situations. So what I'd like to do today is to really introduce you to a tool, um, which is storyboarding. Now it's one of the um, the tools that I teach on the personal resilience. Uh, sorry, the yeah the personal resilience I do within um, our course, um, and it's by Chris Johnson who um, uh, does the College of Wellbeing, and I can show you some links with you later. So adversity. What is adversity? Um, so looking at the adversity, and that's about what's happening. What is this? So it's here's me facing this challenge. Here's me facing this situation that I can't find a way out of. Um, and what do I want to achieve? So it's looking at what you want to get to. So it could be a, something as simple as I can't get up in the morning. You know, I can't get out of bed. Um, I'm, I'm miserable because it's winter. I can't even, I can't feed my dog. I can't take my dog for a walk. I can't go out, get up, have, have breakfast. I can't go and feed the kids. I don't know, whatever it might be. We can retrain, we can retrain our brains to actually learn these tools and techniques. And it's about practice. It's about actually developing your own personal resilience practice. So what I'd like to do with you, and it's going to be really brief, I can appreciate that, but I'd like to just introduce you to storyboarding. And this is just a way to um, help you go through some form of um, um, uh, a toolkit, if you like. So this is part of my toolkit. And starting with looking at what the challenges you're actually facing. And then you take what your hoped for outcome is. And what this does is it, it's just a way of getting from one um, process where you're facing some kind of challenge or adversity and how you kind of get to that end goal. And it doesn't, the end goal doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, that where, I guess, where you are going to get, just getting out of bed, that can be part of that process to getting up and maybe having breakfast or like I say taking the dog for a walk or being able to go to work you know sometimes um, if you have, we have duvet days don't we so it's looking at those things that are in the way and if it is it could be something as simple as I'm just feeling really low I'm feeling really depressed um, it could be there's something else going on for you in your life I know you can't pay the bills or something's happened in your relationship um, and then what we look at is what facing all of these challenges is what do you have in your toolkit that you can actually use to help you overcome this adversity so for me um, like I said it's using the permaculture design process and, and the ethics but it's actually as well it could be reading it could be walking it could be getting outside in nature very much for me again getting outside in nature and then a turning or shift point could be that perhaps if you don't find a way to go through that process yourself something could make you shift in that direction and it could not always be perhaps the process that you actually want so it's finding ways that you 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 know you might say to yourself well actually um i'm, I'm just going to get up i'm, I'm going to go and have a glass of water um the dog does actually needs to go out and the dog's barking i've got to go and go and take her out um and then what you do is you take um some ideas and solutions and you might write a few of those down and you look at what you can actually do going forward to help you overcome this situation, no matter how small it is going forward. So what I quickly, you know, quickly say, you know, as best we can in the time we have available is just to go through a couple of those um, boxes with you. So first of all, here's an example um, that um, this was done by somebody in one of the courses, how they overcome being able to see their family during lockdown. So the situation was they couldn't really see family um, and um, had to think about that the um, hoping for the end of the restrictions and going to see them for a few days. So, um, and then looking at the things that were in the way were the government restrictions, safety concerns, the vulnerability of parents, um, traveling so far away. And then the facing all that, what helps me is, was a phone contact and hope. And I really like this because hope was in there. 
And that can be something as simple, it can be just be really simple as, as hope, that just hoping that you will be able to get um, to where you want to get to. So this is just a, um, a, a really simple way of how you might use this tool. So what I'd like to um, do with you is concentrate on a couple of these boxes, is thinking about um, facing the challenge that you face. What I'd like you to think about when you um, have some kind of adversity, what is it that really helps you? And what steps have you taken in the past to help you shift forward in uh, an adversity um, or challenging situation? So just sort of bearing this in mind. So think about a situation um, that you have faced and where you may have actually, um, or what you might have actually used to help you overcome that particular adversity. So I'm gonna stop sharing the screen now. Okay, and time always seems to go much quicker than I think in these. So yeah, so I invite you to just to think um, of a situation where you're facing adversity. And I invite you to think about challenges that have helped you, or tools that have helped you overcome particular challenges in the past, or things that perhaps, um, you know, you might be going through something right now, and it could be something as simple as coming here on this Roots and Resilience session and looking at ways that you can pull um, a toolkit together to hope, help you overcome adversity. So I'd just like to do a bit of a go round um, and, and just perhaps go through some examples where you faced adversity and um, any tools that you may have come up with or anything that you're just thinking about right now that has come up new for you. So I invite anyone at all um, to uh, bring something to the space to share. Um, I can start. Thank um, you. I, I don't think of it uh, so much as a tool, but more as a, a method where um, sometimes where things do feel overwhelming and you don't know in what end to start. Um, I always think to, to start with the things that I can affect personally. So, if, I mean, there are, there are many examples, but like say, if you're really depressed and you don't feel like you can get out of bed, but actually you can physically get out of bed. You might not be able to change your work situation because not all of that in, is in your control if, if that's what's affecting you, but everything that you can actually immediately um, affect, then start with that in, in like small steps, because then all of a sudden, then at least <clears throat> you, you're affecting your immediate surrounding and your own well-being. Whereas things that are like a, a further reach, you can't maybe change a political situation or you can't change, you know, things that are far away. Don't spend so much time on that or effort on that, but just focus on yourself in, in that way. Thank you, Teresa, that's, love. that's great. Thank you very much, that's fantastic. Would anyone else like to share? Yeah, I can share something. Um, I think yeah, something which I've noticed definitely in myself and probably applicable to other people more or less is yeah often when I have any sort of challenge I kind of find myself like I don't know like I feel myself very, very isolated like I'm the only person who is going through this or I'm just like mulling it over and I kind of like just step away from other people and yeah it becomes a kind of spiral of destruction you know you start off by feeling like you're thinking about something and then you step away and then you realize that you've kind of isolated yourself and it's just kind of making it worse and yeah I find it really helpful actually to yeah like to check in with people who are close to me and to kind of think you know in this situation who is my support system who could I share this with in a way that they would be able to support me without it like impacting them in a negative way um because yeah sometimes that's different people depending on what we're going through 
Um, so yeah, I find that really helpful, like communicating and reaching out. Um, and you know, sometimes the things in our heads when we speak them out loud, uh, um, yeah, they start to be less of a kind of anxious jumble and kind of you start to see a way through them. Yeah, thanks, Sophie. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Would anybody else like to bring anything to the space? No, Steve. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Laura. Thank you. I can share about, uh, I was uh, saying when I introduced myself that I'm in Czech Republic and I'm living in a little village. Uh, really in the middle of uh, nowhere and um, and I want to create this community but uh, for me uh, the, the language wasn't uh, it's still not my my language speaking so and uh, in this uh, way often I was completely down because I was completely Oh my God, how I will achieve it to reach the people because also when you're in a village, people are close in them house and doesn't wanna. So step by step, it helped me to uh, get uh, the courses and then try to meet moms because I have my son. So I try to meet moms and, and now I'm still not in this part of community creating, but um, it's really step-by-step step going uh, uh, better and better, meeting moms with the language and try to uh, learn better and better with, with uh, class. So uh, what helped me most, it wasn't just to stay in my in my bubble and create my garden and and try to um, show show off these things, but mostly um, meeting other people, see them interest, try to uh, create links with them, and and now maybe one day we hope to reach the community point. But it's really time time taking based on the learning languages also and to be able to manage this language as they do so this is one part for me thank you laura thank you for sharing thank you very much uh so i just like to <clears throat> excuse me share what christina has wrote my strategy is um, to sit and try to relax as much as I can so that I can get to a conclusion or some clarity. I don't have um, some usually someone to talk to about issues I'm going through. Thank you, Christina. And that can be really challenging if we feel we can't have anyone to talk to um, and we can internalise those things so much more. And at least if we can talk things out, um, I find... You know, sometimes I, I either use um, uh, organizations. So in this country, we have an organization called the Samaritans. You just pick up the telephone and if you're really feeling you need to talk and, and they're brilliant, they're, they're there and you, they've listened to you and they're really, you know, the language, the tone of their voice is just amazing. Um, and sometimes I, I'll just call a friend or anybody kind of random, I suppose, in the hope that they're, they're just there or, or in this day and age with technology. Um, I use WhatsApp, you know, so I have a few people on WhatsApp and sometimes just communicating that way, knowing there's somebody at the end of the phone, it's not the same as actually having that voice, I guess, to talk to. But it, it I guess for me, it, it gives some kind of connection. And I guess that's another level um, where we're dealing with technology as well that can kind of disconnect us from people. So I try to use it in a really positive way where I can. Um, so does anybody else have uh, anything else they'd like to share? Thank you, Sophie, um, but uh, for the time, that's great. I've got 10, 10 minutes left. Does anyone else have anything they would like to bring to the space? Okay. So what I'd like to... Um, 
Hi, Steve, you're breaking up a bit. Did you want to yes. say something, Steve? Yeah, you're... If you turn your screen off, it yeah. might... We can't hear you, Steve. If you turn your video off, then we might be able to hear you. Yeah, that seems to be better. Okay, I can't really hear a word that's being said. The video is so choppy. I can't hear out what people are saying. It comes and goes, but most of the conversation is. Okay, sorry um, that you're having problems. Um, I'm. It's, you're breaking up definitely for me. I can't really hear you. It's bits and pieces. I don't know if anybody else is having problems like that. Yeah, we also can't hear you well, Steve. If you'd like to type something in the chat, because while your audio is on, we can hear like a delayed reverb of all the audio. That's just quite painful. Okay. Um, so if you've got something you'd like to share, Steve, if you could type it in the chat, that would um, that'd be awesome. I'm sorry that you can't hear us. Um, really would love to hear what you have to say. Um, so I must about uh, probably get about five minutes left, I would think now. Um, so um, yeah, so what I would like to do is just in the last time we actually, amount of time we've got left, is for you to think of something right now um, that you're facing some challenge with and come up with um, about, let's say two things that you feel can um, help you overcome that challenge, things that you can perhaps do in the next seven days. So we'll just see um, how much we can get. We might only be able to do a sort of couple of people with this, but we actually try. So just just for uh, uh, just a few seconds, just think of something that you're you've got a challenge with now, and two things that you feel you might be able to do um, in the next seven days just to help you shift forward to the next stage. So I'm just going to give you just a few seconds to think about that. Okay. So would anybody like to share what their, um, their challenge is and the two things that they think they may be able to do in the next seven days to help shift forward with it? I could. Um, um, Thank you. Sure. So um, my family recently, we, we had our, my grandma had just died last week. And so my mom's mom and my sister's grandma as well and so uh, that's quite a challenge for us but something that really helps me in any situation not in this not just in this one is first of all when I'm reacting in a way where uh, I feel myself stressed out or any sort of negative emotion I try to identify the abstract fear where that reaction is coming from like uh, what what do I fear? I ask myself, what do I fear? And then I try to shift the, the, the perspective from, fear, from a fear-based perspective to a hopeful or a loving perspective. And I try to focus on it and maybe repeat it as a mantra or a little bit something until it kind of st sticks in my head and the fear gets silenced out um yeah and uh, the the love perspective gets more gets louder and that's what i like to do also with other people other people's reactions for example when they they um react in a way where it's unpleasant to me or it's i see it's harming them or um, yeah i try to maybe uh, process it and analyze it in a way where i identify their fear and I try to meet them in a way where I don't react to to their actions. I don't react in an offensive way or in a yeah in a yeah yeah. 
So it's kind of like a general rule that I have. I don't know about the second one. Maybe this is <laughs> good enough. No, thank you. Is it uh, Roxandra? Is that how I say, yes. say your name? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And that's really important as well, is being able to understand other peer, other people's um, feelings and emotions and, and meeting the edge between the two and how they can kind of, you know, how we can conflict with that. So that's really important. And I love how you were saying about the love um, that it's so simple, isn't it? Just if we can reframe that and turn it on its head. Um, yeah. And it feels amazing too. So yeah. I just wanted to, um, to share so st thank you Steve uh, you just put the current situation seems to stretch people's resilience there are plenty of reports about declining mental health developing these coping strategies is vital absolutely um, and really that's what um, I really hope to be doing by coming here on these sessions and it's only touching base with with a, a small part of it um, but definitely promoting it going forward um, and that's something hopefully working with the Permaculture Association on, on actually doing. So, um, Sophie, how much I would imagine the time is probably up by now. Uh, you have got four more minutes. Wow. That's actually the last few minutes. So uh, going quite slow. OK, so does anybody else have. Um... OK, to say something. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, it's okay to just, I just really wanted to say something about um, what, it's kind of what picking up on what Ruxandra said, but also on what you first showed us, Wendelin, that page where somebody had written hope. Um, I think that that's at, and what Rux was saying, because when you said that, I thought, you know, that's something, that's not something necessarily that's passive, but that's something we can actively build and work towards by, um, whether it's you know however maybe if we have some spiritual path or or even just sitting still whichever way it is that we can build hope in ourselves for some people I suppose it's something like prayer meditation or it may not necessarily something spiritual it doesn't even have to be even just dreaming even just thinking positive things but just the fact that it doesn't have to be a passive thing that we just sit and hope you know that we can actually um actively try to make it reality Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, and, and again, um, it, yeah, active hope. Thank you, the other Sophie. Um, so I don't know any of you know um, the work by Joanna Macy. Um, that and it, it's actually quite interesting because the storyboarding that I've showed you um, is by Chris Johnson, and he helped Joanna. Well, he um, has a co-author of Active Hope with Joanna Macy. Um, so very much there's a there's a crossover with this, and, and if you um, actually uh, sort of get his book you'll see that there's a lot of the uh, similar language as well um what i'd like to do is just share the screen with you once more so you can actually i can actually show you what that book looks like there we go so this is um seven ways to build resilience so the storyboarding is um from this book here and it's a fantastic book it really helps you go through all these um, seven ways to actually build resilience and it's quite in depth um, so I thoroughly um, thoroughly recommend it. So does anybody have anything else they would like to share any any sort of techniques or anything that's facing a challenge now I, I think we've got a couple of minutes left. No. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, everybody, for sharing your stories um, and the adversity that you may be facing and the tools and techniques that you be um, using. And I hope that although I've only touched on it briefly, that you can think about this as, as an example to, um, to add to your toolkit, to your permaculture toolkit. So thank you very much for listening to me this evening. Thank you so much, Wendelin. That was wonderful. Yeah, it's really lovely to see how permaculture tools can be used, yeah, so fully um, and how they can be combined with other skills. Okay, so we're going to have a break now for 10 minutes and I'm going to stop the recording and yeah, we're going to come back at 5.2. So yeah, you're welcome to take a break or stay on the call and chat, whatever feels right for you. And yeah, we'll continue in 10 minutes.
Thank you.